Hello everyone, welcome to this video. So in this video, we will be going to answer this question here. The question tell us that what can we say about the number of elements of each order for an arbitrary finite groups. So until then we were talking about cyclic finite groups, right? Now if we are not given the group to be cyclic or it could be any finite group, right? For a cyclic group, we mean that the group is generated by one element, right? This was the definition for cyclic group. Now, we were now in this case, we are saying that we have any fi arbitrary finite group. Then can we also count the number of elements of each order in this case, right? So we have a result in this regard, which tell us that in a finite group, the number of elements having order D, this is a multiple of phi of D. Right. So in, in a special case where we were talking about cyclic finite groups, the number of elements of order D was exactly counted by this calculating this phi of D, the Euler phi function of the number D. Right. But now in this case, uh, when we have arbitrary finite group, it is a multiple of phi of D. Let's see how this thing is there with the help of its proof. In the proof, because we have finite group, so it would have finite number of elements. If suppose that it has no elements which would have order D, in that case, uh, phi of D would be equal to zero because it has no elements of uh, such kind. So the statement is true because phi of D divides zero, so it would be a multiple of phi of D. Now, if so, uh, now suppose that this finite group G contains an element A. So for no element, the case is done. So next, let us prove it when we when it has some elements. So let's say A is some element within this group G whose order is D, right? So according to the theorem that we have studied previously, which states that for a d positive divisor D of N, right, the number of elements of order D, they are exactly given by phi of D in a cyclic group, right? So uh, for this element A, we can construct a group which is generated by this. Obviously, this would be a subset of the given group G, right? So there is no issue in that uh, in doing so so therefore in this case we would say a group which is generated by the element a would have phi d elements which has order d according to the previous result that we already know right now if all the elements of order d which are present in d so what we are saying we are saying from this group g if uh, all the elements which would have order D are present in the group which is generated by A right? they are present here only. So all of them will have the order phi of D and nothing is required to be done. However, if you have some element here which also has the order D say that element is B. N now what can we say about that? So suppose that there is some element B in G right which is also of order D and it is not present in the subgroup which is generated by A. Then in that case, again applying the uh, this result, this theorem onto the element uh, B here, we would create a subgroup which is generated by B and for this subgroup, it would have phi D as the number of elements which would have order D, right? So then B, uh, the group generated by B also has phi D elements of order D. So this means that we have found two into phi D. One phi D is for the group which is generated by A and one phi D is for the group which is generated by D, B. Right. So when you add both of them, you have in total two phi D elements which would have order D and they are present in the group G, which is a finite group. So Next, we say that this thing would be possible whenever they do not have any element in common, right? The, uh, then only it would be 2 phi d, otherwise it would be less than 2 times of phi d. So we assume that uh, the group generated by A and the group generated by B, they have no elements of order D in common to each other. Now, what if they have some element which is common to them. Suppose uh, there is some element C which is uh, having order D and it is com common to both of the groups generated by A and that generated by B. In that case, uh, we would have all these three as 
equal groups. The group generated by A would be equal to the group generated by B and it would further be equal to the group generated by C, right? So that means uh, we would have the group generated by A equal to the group generated by B. So this would tell you that B will be a member of the group generated by A. However, we have considered B as such an element which is not present in the subgroup generated by A. So therefore, this pose us a contradiction. So that means there is no element which is common to both B and C. So that means we would have 2 phi D as the number of elements which are present, which, uh, which would be there in D and which has order D, right? So we can continue in this fashion and uh, whatever is the number of elements of order D in a finite group, so that would finally be a multiple of phi D. Depending on how many different elements are there in this group G, which would have order D. So for each element, we would have a order phi D. So uh, combining all of them, we would have finally the number uh, of elements which would have order D as a multiple of phi D. So this is what we wanted to prove here in this theorem. So I hope you understood this result. Well, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching.